dig into the results of the study is one of the authors, Dr. Nick Stuckey. He's vice president of research at Truveta and an infectious disease physician with Providence Health. Doctor, thank you for joining us. So tell us, tell us what this study shows. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Um, this study is really out ahead of the randomized controlled trials, um, comparing um, the effectiveness of Mount Jaro versus Ozempic in overweight and obesity. And so what we showed was using um, patient data from patients that are out there receiving this drug on label or off label, um, we're able to show that uh, Mount Jaro is quite a bit more effective than Ozempic. And um, what we see, like specific stats, um, those that achieve 15% weight loss are three times more likely to be on Mount Jaro versus Ozempic. So that's a kind of the high level finding. Um, we also see that over time, three, six, and 12 months, that the, the um, benefit of Mount Jaro is actually increased. So more likely to achieve greater weight loss even farther out at farther out time points. Has anything ever been done like this where the, where the two have been compared and contrasted? And by the way, doctor, neither of them are approved, right, for obesity and weight loss, though their sort of sister drugs are. That's exactly right. So those are really a few really good call outs. Um, first of all, the randomized controlled trial is underway and will be, you know, it's expected in maybe six months to a year. So um, that's one benefit here. We are looking at the diabetes dosage of these two drugs. And so you're right that um, the obesity dosage will be higher, but really um, able to look at what we would expect to see when that randomized control trial comes out um, in you know, the, the coming year. Doctor, can you talk to a little bit about, um, so the patients that are taking this for obesity, some of the other trials that have gone on around heart attack and stroke and, and sort of you know, how this ties into this whole conversation? Because I know there's lots of different trials going on for lots of different ailments. Yes, 100%. I mean, we've seen benefit in kidney disease and cardiovascular outcomes. Um, American Heart Association Conference was um, two weeks ago, and there was some new data showing a uh, striking improvement in cardiovascular outcomes. And um, what we're really trying to do now is like understand where these benefits are and, and what's driving them, because these things are acting both um, you know, in increasing insulin, but also um, increasing satiety in patients. And so leading to lots of um, great outcomes, but um, everybody's just moving as quickly as possible, which is where, you know, I think having this data from Truveta really helps um, because we can look across, you know, 18,000 patients and through our data set of 100 million um, electronic health records um, to do this like advanced research. Dr. Stuckey, it's Karen Feinerman. Thanks for being on. So it says yeah, that if the Manjaro patients were three times as likely to lose 15% of their body weight um, versus the competitor. And does that mean 10% exactly. versus 30% of the people were able to lose 15% of their body weight? Or what, what were those underlying numbers? And then on average, what, does the, what do the different populations lose? Yeah, so good. So it's really about uh, the time base. So, you know, going out a year is where we see the most commonly see that 15% weight loss. And, um, and we see like a really the most pronounced difference going out a year from, um, from, you know, those patients being on it. And that makes a lot of sense, right? The longer the patients on it, the more the more benefit they're going to see. Um, the, the high level numbers that I have here, you know, we saw 6% um, of patients on Munjaro. Um, or, or patients on Mujaro at three months lose on average 6% of their body weight compared to 3.6% with Ozempic. And then going out 12 months, it's 15.2% for Mujaro versus 8% for Ozempic. So that should give you an idea of, of some of those average numbers. And just finally, Dr. Stuckey, what, why did you guys do this? Who commissioned the study? Yeah, great question. Well, you know, our mission is saving lives with data and um, we do, I, I lead the internal research team and we're really trying to advance um, um, health uh, across the country where we can. And so we do take on a few of these studies um, as we're able. And of course we work with our healthcare systems and life science partners to, to really make a big impact where we can. We saw the opportunity here. Would you still prescribe to your patients Ozempic because of the, the big gap here in efficacy or not? Yeah, that's a great question. I definitely would. I mean, these things have been, rev like all the GLP-1s yeah. have really been revolutionary in treating um, a variety of diseases. And of course, 
as we know with shortage and you know your insurance company may cover one and not the other and so i think it's important to remember um that they're all effective and um and these are really revolutionizing things for us so i would wouldn't hesitate and it's just it's just here what we're seeing is one is quite a bit better than the other